Hey, welcome. We're at Luke chapter 4, verse 33 to 37. Now let's go straight to it. Now in the synagogue, there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in their midst, it came out of him and did not hurt him. Then they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, saying, What a word this is! For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the report about him went out into every place in the surrounding region. Well, here's an interesting incident. We just saw Jesus teaching in the synagogues yesterday morning, but now we see a particular case. He goes in, and there's a person, and he has a demon. He is a possessed person. And he cries out. Now, we have to think about these demons and understand a little bit what they're doing. You know, there are, we said that in the Bible that angels are, we're, humans are a little bit lower than the angels. And so we think the demons are actually higher. They're, they're, uh, they're just fallen angels. That's all they are. And so they're perhaps more intelligent. And so here we have one who thinks that it's going to be better to identify Jesus than not to identify Jesus. That's kind of interesting. And I, you wonder kind of why this might be. We're not told explicitly, but I think there's an answer. I think there's some answer maybe in this line. The demons calculate. They're very good reasoners. They have good logic. You and I maybe don't have usually always such good logic, but the demons have good logic. And these demons have calculated that at this point in the situation of what's going on, that it's more useful to their purposes to confuse the issue about who Jesus represents than not. And so by as they come and say, we know who you are, you're the Holy One of God, have you come to destroy us? For them to say something like that, I think they're trying to muddy the water. They're trying to, because who's saying this? Demons. What are demons known for? Lying. And so as a negative source, a person who's demon-possessed speaks this kind of thing out, people are going to be, they hope, the demons hope, identifying Jesus with the, the fallen world, and they're confusing the situation about who does Jesus represent? Does he represent God the Father, or is he... Uh, part of some weird demon thing going on. So I think that's what's going on. They're trying to confuse the issue, but you can always tell the difference between truth and error how by what works out in a person's actions. And so Jesus is going to go out. He's going to be healing people. He's going to be doing good all over the place. That's going to kind of wipe that thing out. But the devils are trying, and, and they think this is, the, their calculation is this will serve their purposes best. Very interesting maybe gives us pause also to be careful about what we think and the conclusions we reach, because sometimes we might reach a conclusion where we've been led into the wrong spot. Anyway, here we have a case. Notice, of course, and we'll see more of this, but Jesus, when Jesus calls them out, what do they have to do? They have no options. They have to come out. Jesus is stronger. When his word comes, the demons must leave. And so the people, the reaction of the people, always kind of interesting in the Gospels here. They're amazed. They're amazed at this. And again, he's speaking with a power, with an authority. And notice the reaction in 37. The report about him went out into every place in the surrounding region. So there you have it. Uh, Jesus, he's, he's teaching the word of God. He's teaching in the synagogues. He's preaching with authority. And here we have what? Here we have him. He's calling the demons out, and the demon people are becoming uh, freed from demon possession. So, yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on in Judea these days and right here north in Galilee. Let's pray. Father in heaven, your church is weak today. It is, it is lame. Many times uh, there's no persecution, and perhaps the reason persecution lacks is because there's a lack of vital godliness in our own experiences. Please, Lord, we would pray that you would help us to respond to your word. We would hear your word and respond to it and uh, want to be part of your kingdom. Work for us, Lord. Lord, please help us with any demon influences upon us or upon our loved ones or even possession. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, Jesus is on our side. He is all-powerful. Be blessed by this fact today. May the Lord be with you.